Hello, everyone. My name is Brooke Henning. I am the founder of the High Ticket Ecom Incubator. And today we are here with one of our new hired coaches, Trigvi. He's our new SEO coach. Welcome, Trigvi. Can you please introduce yourself to everyone listening and uh, maybe just say where you're from and a bit about your previous experience in ecom, if at all? Yeah. Hey, man. Uh, thanks. Yeah. My name is Trigvi and I am uh, joined your uh, program in back in, I think it was end of October. Yeah. And yeah, I had an awesome time. And my, my previous experience comes from mainly building my own affiliate sites. And I've been doing that since, I think, 2009. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. So what made I, you get into that? Did you work at like an e-com agency before you became an affiliate? Or how did you get into affiliate? No, I was, in, I was taking my master's degree in, uh, in England when the, you know, the mm-hmm. economic collapse was. And yeah. you know, we, we needed money. <laughs> so <laughs> I just started Googling how to make money. And yeah, I found found this course that was teaching how to, you know, white label ebooks and then run traffic to it with SEO. And yeah, I did that and I made a few sales. It was, was yeah, not a good site, but, you know, it got me started and, and I've been hooked since. Yeah, yeah. Usually, usually when you get started, it's not, yeah. it's not that pretty, but you learn kind of yeah. as you go. So with Affiliate, yeah. when you got into it in 2009, 2009, what were kind of the margins you would get for something then? And did you see it? Did that change over time from like 2009 till like 10 years past that 2020? Yeah, when I got started, I was getting like up to 12% margins. So wow. it was like t- tire based. You would could build yourself up to like 8, 10, 12% if you're doing really good. And yeah, I did that and I quit my job in 2014 and, and you know, went full time. But ever since then, it's just going, just going down. Every year, it just gets lower and lower. And at the peak of COVID, it went down to like 1% to 3%. Wow. And yeah. Wow. So Is that just because there's way more people doing it, or why is it going down? I mean, uh, Amazon is just getting bigger and bigger, and they just are less reliant on, on uh, affiliates running traffic to them. And, you know, they have it is category dependent, but, you know, they can afford to do it. So they, they, they did it as soon as COVID hit. They just slashed the, the commission just like 70%. So. And did you do any affiliate stuff outside of Amazon or was it just kind of Amazon was your primary? Yeah, I did a little bit, but, but Amazon was always like 90%. Okay. You always ended up going back to them because of their, you know, you can't compete with, with their commercial. People know them. They're such a high, well-known brand that, that everyone that you send traffic to, they just convert. So, yeah. So with... Is that decreasing margins? Is that what kind of led to you looking into high ticket ecom? Because I know when you got started, we had this talk a bit. It seemed like why aren't affiliates just doing high ticket ecom? Because if you're getting one to three percent margin, why would you not just do it yourself, run some ads, hire some customer service reps, and get like twenty five? Is that what kind of led to that decision? Yeah, I, I, I had enough when 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 they slashed it down to like three percent. I just had enough. I just said, I'm going to quit this. And I started selling off my sites. And, you know, earlier last year, I had just sold everything off and I was just taking courses and joining programs and just trying to figure out like my next steps. Yeah. And then I came across your, your tweets and I instantly knew, ah, yeah, this is, this is something I want to do because it just makes so much sense to, just because of the margins and then the, the whole concept, it just makes perfect sense for my skill set at least. So. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of cool how you had this skill set that wasn't really, I guess it's sort of e-com related, but it's like kind of like one yeah. thing like SEO for those listening. Affiliate is essentially like it's an SEO skill set. So he can essentially apply his exact skill set to e-com and just get way bigger margins. Obviously, you're taking on some additional things like customer service and yeah. um, we can dive into it more. But your whole getting set up and everything was a big, big headache for you. But um, <laughs> now that you're up and running, you can essentially apply the same skill set, which is pretty cool. So when you had affiliate, were you were you running any Google ads at the time? So did you no. have any like advertising experience or was it just SEO? Yeah, just SEO because, yeah, I mean, we, the margins are so low. You have to be very, very, I don't know, you have to choose the right keywords and then do SEO and you have to be very accurate when you do it because... There's very really little margin for errors when you're getting, you know, six, seven, eight percent commission. Running ads to something like that is, I think, it's difficult. So I've never tried it, but the 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 SEO part was going so well, and you know, I was getting a lot of traffic, and and so I didn't need to run ads. I just had my system. I'm really good at SEO, so that's what I was doing. But 
now that I'm getting like up to 60% margins on, on some of these products, running ads, you, you know, we have more space to, to figure things out and, and, and you know, pay for, for that traffic. So is that how ads play into SEO? Like, would you run ads on keywords and then the keywords that convert in your ad account, you would try to rank for SEO? Or is, yeah, there, yeah. is that pretty much the strategy? Yeah, that, that's, that's, a, that's a great strategy because I already, I mean, I've been running ads now for a week. And, you know, I, I'm seeing some strange products convert that I didn't even know I had on the store almost. And then I can go look them up and, and I see like a great opportunity with little competition. And then you can just do a little bit of SEO, do content and, and backlinks. And, you know, in maybe six months, you're getting free free sales, basically. So yeah. I think it's it's awesome. Did When you were doing uh, affiliate, did you learn any CRO, like conversion rate optimization? Because I'm assuming there's a big piece of affiliate where you got to kind of get people to click yeah. to go to another site, right? So is it yeah. is it CRO based? Did you learn a CRO skill set as well? Yeah, I, I didn't take any courses or anything like, like that. I was just obsessed about getting the click all the time. I, I would monitor like what people were doing on the site. I would use heat maps and like try to figure out why they would click and why not and, and you know, try to maximize the, the click both from the you know, search result by, by optimizing the title tags and the like the description that people see. So get people to click on the site and then get people to click off the site. So, you know, if, if you double your click rate, you're essentially just doubling your, your, your income as well. So yeah, and it's a really good skill to learn, I think. And so now that we can dive into it in a minute, but you had your ad account. So for everyone listening, Trigby had his ad account banned. He had a whole... We're not sure why it quite happened, but he finally got unbanned last week. So how have your sales been, your results been since you launched ads in the last, I guess, four or five days? What have you made in sales since then? Yeah, I lost the, I got everything cleared on uh, over the weekend and I started running ads on Monday and, you know, I spent $20 on Monday and I got 20K in sales. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good ROAS. Yeah. So, I think I think important point to emphasize is Trigby's in the program for I think four months, maybe a bit longer. But he just started his ads Monday, but the entire time you continued adding brands, you continue adding products. So people now, there's a couple people in the program with ad account bands, and I say like Trigby is literally the perfect example of just keep putting the work in and controlling what you can control. And if you end up having the store for five years, the two months that your ad account was banned is really going to be very small, and you can still make progress in all the important areas during that time. So when you tick, flip them on, the result, it'll be that much easier to scale. So how many products do you actually have on your store now, Trigby? I know it's a lot. Yeah, I have 5,000 in Mercant Center with, <laughs> with you know, uh, all the variants and things like that. So I'm not sure how many how many there are actually, but there are a lot of, lot of products I have. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but if you even if you're banned by Google, you can always like improve the site and just get organic traffic. So, exactly, yeah. So you are from um, Iceland. So for anyone listening, you can do high tea gum for anywhere in the world. You can do it in your own country. Like we have people who are from Australia running in Australia, from the UK running in the UK. But Trigger is from Iceland, but running it in the US. Did you have any complications to get your business set up or was it pretty simple? You just filed the US LLC. Um, is it pretty administratively easy? I mean, it's easy to set up the LLC. It only takes a few weeks and, you know, you can pay you know, 300 to 500 to get everything done and, and, you know, get your address and everything. But once that was set up and I had my sites, site running, I ran into some issues because like, I'm not from the U S mm -hmm. so I think some of the reasons for my account bans and things like that, because, you know, there, there wasn't uh, this match, like my store is in the U S with an address, but me as a person, I'm in Iceland. Yeah. So there was a little bit of friction there. And the same with Shopify, but once you get over all of that, you, 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 you submit all the papers and they see that you're a real person and that you're not trying to scam anyone. Yeah. And I mean, you have good products and you're, you're, you have good customer support and you're doing all the right things. There's absolutely no reason why you should, you should be banned. So okay. it's just about improving and, and, and cons consistently just fixing things and, and then you get over it and then, then you can just go and yeah, run that set. Not actually any more like hurdles. It's more just they're more careful with you just because the different addresses and stuff. You just have to kind of, kind of submit more papers and everything like that. But yeah. once you get over it, it's, it's definitely possible. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So you've obviously had a great week since launching ads. Is there anything that you found 
when picking your niche or closing suppliers that you think sticks out or you would kind of go back and give someone just starting advice when they're trying to choose their niche or suppliers or anything that you've kind of come across that's led to like your good suppliers that you've made sales with or anything that sticks out that way? I mean, if, if, if you're absolutely new to this, then, then I would recommend going with a niche store, you know, going, mm-hmm. going down from the general down to the something very specific. And even if you pick a niche and it doesn't work out, you can always change. It's just a time variable. You can always just, if you're looking at it as a, at a five-year t- scale, I mean, yeah. it's, it's not that big of a deal if, if your store fails. So uh, I picked a very general store, so it's it's huge. And I did that because I know I know SEO and I know how to then take a niche down from that and, and like just create more stores. So, so what's your what's your kind of long term game with that for so anyone listening SEO just high level if you have a broad store for, to rank SEO you want to be an expert or be kind of considered an authority figure in one space. What Trigby is doing is he's building a very big store to test essentially. Am I understanding correctly? So you'll test your product, see what works, and then your goal will be to build niche niche stores, which are subcategories of your big store, which you'll really dial in on SEO. So is yeah, that the long term strategy to have a collection of stores? Yeah, yeah. I think having like ten stores would be would be good if if I can do it with, <laughs> with the with the accounts and merchant and everything. But that's another another story. But yeah, I would love to have like ten stores. And then would you uh, plan to sell those, like some of them, or do you just want to have all those kind of generating income for you? Or would you like buy and sell them as like individual assets as you build them up? Yeah, I would definitely like sell maybe two. I mean, I can see that sell two or three, maybe every one or two years and, and then just build out new ones. I think that'd be, that'd be cool. And obviously the content marketing landscape is changing a ton with AI specifically. Yeah. What role do you think things like, writing content with AI and then a whole different question is do you think that like search engines are going to be replaced by something like ChatGPT or like where you can just ask it a question how do you think that this will have an effect on SEO over the next five to ten years do you have any thoughts on that yeah of course but um, I mean it's difficult to to predict what happens because yeah. I mean, this chat GPT has been you know happening so fast I mean predicting what's going to happen in three years is, is I mean it's impossible but I think that Authorship has been a big thing for Google in the last few years. So they want to know where, where the content comes from and, and who's behind it. Like what's his experience and expertise. And that way they can assess the, the, you know, the authority of the content, basically, because the author is an expert or something. When you have uh, content that's generated by an AI, I mean, you don't have that. But you might have good content. You know, I think that... AI content is going to be evaluated similar to just duplicated content. So it's going to be like, it's, it's, it's good, it's okay, but it's not as valuable as expert content. So I think it's going to be more important to ha- have, you know, expertise and experience when moving forward. But mm-hmm. I mean, AI content is definitely here to stay. And especially with like Google is now very big on like this topical relevancy and, and sites that have this topical authority. Because they're just covering so much topic within their site. And you can do that with AI content. Basically, now you can just hammer out content and, and, you know, get a lot of traffic that way. But I think that it's going to be more important to have then good SEO and, you know, a good backlink, authoritative backlink profile. Because that way you can, you know, distinguish yourself from the competition, basically. Yeah. If everyone Um, can do AI content, then I guess the differentiator then goes to backlinking. I, I think that... You know, uh, if, if Google were to switch to, you know, this chat and AI thing, then they're like the cost is going up like 10, 50 times. So they're trying to like give people search results at a scale and they don't get at the moment. They can't do it with, with you know, AI because it's just too expensive. So we'll see how that goes. It'll be interesting to watch. So for someone just starting in SEO, in you kind of mentioned it would be better to do a niche store. Would you recommend if start, someone's starting an e-com store and they want to focus on SEO? And just a reason why you would do that to those listening is like, let's say if you have 25, 30% margin, if you pay to acquire the customer, let's say you spend 10, 15%, half of your profit margin is gone to acquire the customer. Where if you make that same sale in SEO, you keep the whole amount. So it's a really good way to increase your profit margins. So trick B, if someone was starting in e-com and they really wanted to make focus on SEO, really maximize their profitability and their profit margins, 
you would kind of recommend focusing on a very niche store and becoming an expert in that one thing? Yeah, definitely. So if, if someone is just starting out and they, I mean, they, they don't know anything about SEO or building a, a store, like joining your program is just basically university for, for everything. I mean, you, you, you learn how to set up a, a site, how to get suppliers. You, you, you're an email, email marketing. You learn uh, conversion optimization, SEO. So, I mean, you're just getting all of these skill sets which in of itself is just really valuable. Then you can apply all that to a like a small store. And if you just skip the ad part and just focus on like writing a few articles every week and building out your store, then in you know in one year you're gonna have a, a asset that basically generates revenue every month. And and all, along the way you just learn so many things about just building a business and running running a business. So that's really cool. Awesome stuff, man. Thank you very much. That's been very, very helpful. So I guess if you were to speak to someone who is considering joining the program, they're, they're not sure, what, what advice would you give them if they're considering building an e-com store and joining the program? Do you have any thoughts? If you can kind of go back to yourself before you join, what would you say? Yeah, I, I would say that if, if you're willing to work hard and, you know, basically apply yourself over a, you know, a long period of time and just willing to like, learn all of these skill sets, then definitely join. I mean, it's it's one of the better ways to get into the make money online game. So I think that's one of the better ways to get started, actually. Well, if anyone's listening, I'll put the call link below to put a qualification call to the team. Trigby is actually now our SEO coach in the program. So he's running bi-weekly calls on SEO. If you're looking for advice there, he'll be excellent help. But Trigby, thanks a lot. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers, man. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.